So you want to be a performing artist, but you don't know where to begin, let alone how to make a living off of your art. Maybe you're a magician or a musician or a puppeteer, or like myself, maybe you're a juggler and a theater artist. But how do you create a show that is fun for you to perform and resonant for audiences? How do you find collaborators to do all the stuff that you don't know how to do, and then how do you keep those people around? How do you fund your creation before the art itself is actually making money? And then finally, how do you market and sell and tour this thing? These are all very important questions for a performing artist to ask, but unfortunately answers are not always easy to come by. Oftentimes we have to learn difficult lessons the hard way even after a four-year degree in our chosen art form. That is where this book comes in, The Contemporary Circus Handbook by Eric Bates. And if you are not a circus artist, don't click off of this video just yet because I did an interview with Eric and this is what he had to say about it. I think one of the big reflections I had upon finishing the book was that it wasn't just about making circus shows, it was about how to work well as a team, how to collaborate with people. Um, and so whether you're making a dance show or a circus show or, I don't know, opening a bakery, uh, it's still a lot about how do you, how does your team make decisions? Like how is your hierarchy defined? Because even if you say we're all even, at the end of the day, is it a vote? Is it this person has the choice on this scene, this person has the choice on that scene, this person does the music and we give them the final say? Yeah, I think a lot of the lessons in this book can apply to different art forms and I actually made it a point to interview a few different directors that I've worked with that have done both dance and circus. Uh, to see if they had any other insights. So yeah, I, I would say this book could really apply to anyone making a, a circus show, a dance show, a physical theater show, really any sort of collaborative project. I know Eric Bates as one of the world's greatest cigar box jugglers. He graduated from the National Circus School of Montreal, and then he went on to work with some of the big names in circus arts, some that you may have heard of, like Seven Fingers, Cirque Elwaz, and yes, even Cirque du Soleil. He also co-founded his own circus company called Cirque Barcode, and he has translated all of the lessons he's learned from building that company into this comprehensive guide to creating shows and navigating navigating the creative industry. I sat down with Eric recently to talk about writing this guide to collaborative showmaking. So before I share with you some of my key takeaways from this book that are going to immediately level up your art making practice, I first want to pass you over to Eric so that he can tell you about the writing process of this book and how you should use it. So when I started writing this, we were, we had made Sweat and Ink um, and then we were starting to make Branche. The founders of Barcode were in Sweat and Ink. For Branche, we were bringing in new people and I didn't want to bring them into a, a crazy process. I wanted to, to respect them as artists and, and take care of as much as we could so that they felt uh, respected of their time and, and of their creativity and just that there was a, a clear system in place. So I was really thinking about the process of making a show. That was a big goal with the book was just you know, everyone I talked to said they learned the hard way, and we certainly were with Barcode. And I said, man, that is such a shame that all the, the good new shows that could be out in the world, how many are actually gonna make it to the end where they get on stage and they get touring, um, and how many fall victim to all of these bumps and roadblocks and, and problems they've never heard of. And if I can just remove some of those obstacles, we're gonna have more good shows out in the world. And so I think while the book is broken into five sections, it's kind of creation, organization, funding, producing, touring, um, one of the challenges of making a show is that you have to always think a few steps in advance. So while you're in the creation, you're also thinking about selling and marketing it. You're also thinking about how is the show gonna travel. So you're building your show and figure out what do we need to, to make this thing we're making, but also how does all that fit in a box when you don't even know what it is you're, you're making yet. So I think just having an overview of the whole process is gonna be really helpful for anyone that's embarking on this for the first time. Like Eric said, there are five sections in this book and the first section on creativity was probably the most profound one for me. I saw many lessons I learned in my undergraduate degree in theater reflected back at me and also many lessons that I think emerging artists today need to pay attention to. The biggest thing that I can recommend any emerging artist do to immediately level up their artistry is to watch other people's shows. Watch shows in your own discipline, but also watch shows in every discipline. Watch as many shows as you possibly can. And as you do, critically analyze what is going on on that stage and behind the scenes. Ask yourself questions like, 
how could I recreate this project with zero dollars as a budget or with an infinite budget? Or what about this production would I wanna keep and what would I wanna get rid of in my own work? As Eric writes in the book, it's easy to be critical of something. It's a lot harder to think of how you could take those same resources and produce something better. Watching shows will clarify your taste, it'll teach you what is possible, and it will show you what is already out there. Another way you can boost your creativity quickly is to set restrictions on yourself. Here's Eric to tell you a bit more about that. I would say something that surprised me was how often I would get similar responses from all these different creators from all around the world. Um, and I think one of the most interesting examples of this was about creativity. And so all these, you know, creative, free-thinking, free-spirited artists, a lot of them said what helped them was structure, which I thought was really interesting. And I would sum it up by saying games need rules. Um, and I think this can apply to creation exercises. So it's not just a free-for-all all the time. And I think it can also apply to just figuring out what you're doing in a creation and what you're not doing. So when we made Branche, you know, we said we're not taking airplanes, we're not using props. We're gonna be in the woods and we're gonna use the trees, but we're not gonna bring in a ladder, we're not gonna do this or that. And, and defining those rules let us be creative within confines so that we weren't overwhelmed with all of the infinite possibilities there are in the empty room. I personally just joined the board of a theatre company where I am responsible for overseeing fundraising efforts. So the funding section of this book was particularly relevant to me. One of the biggest lessons I learned from the funding section was that nobody is going to give you $100,000 to make your show. However, many people might give you $2,500 here or $1,000 there, or maybe they'll fund your travel or your meal expenses if you can pitch a show to them that is going to make them happy. So don't imagine your show or company or whatever you're funding as one big project with a single goal. Rather, imagine it as many little problems that you have to solve, each with their own unique goals that might align with your funder's goals. The other important lesson I learned from this section is that everybody wants to support a winner. So you need to communicate to funders that your project is going to go on to be a success regardless of whether they put money into the project and that other people are already on board with this project. If you don't already have people putting money into your project, one way you can do this is by articulating other things you have through their monetary value. So maybe someone hasn't given you $1,000 so that you can build a website, but maybe you have a brother that's building your website for free and you can say that that's $1,000 worth of work already going into this. Speaking of which, another core lesson from this book is that you cannot build a show alone and you should ask for help when you need it. Here's Eric to tell you a little bit more about that. Most of us, I think our instinct is to try to do it ourselves, but you're gonna need a team eventually unless you happen to also be a light designer, a sound designer, a, you know, a, a tax attorney, whatever. You're gonna have to figure all these things out. Um, and so I wanted to say, here's how you can start. Here's how you can get that first 30 minutes on stage. But also, you know, here's a professional budget from someone that designs budgets for Cirque du Soleil. So if you get to, if you're at that point or if you're looking to get to that point, you also have, you know, the real deal, big budget. And, and then no matter where you are in the process, you have an overview of, of what's next for you and, and how you can improve your practice. Eric's book, The Contemporary Circus Handbook, is published by Modern Vaudeville Press, which is run by another professional circus artist and Cirque du Soleil alum, Tom Wall. And I have really just scratched the surface of what this book has to offer. So if you wanna learn more from Eric and his collaborators or other titles in the Modern Vaudeville Press catalog, here is the publisher, Tom, to tell you how you can find the books. You can find our books, you know, on modernvaudevillepress.com. Everything is available on Amazon. If you go to like your local bookstore and just say, hey, I want a copy of this book. Here's the ISBN. You can get it special ordered and it'll be there in a couple of days. Genuinely, if there's somewhere where you like to get your books, they probably distribute our books. You might just need to 
need to ask him to stock it. If you want more from Eric specifically, he has a YouTube channel where he talks about creativity and what it's like to be a professional circus artist. So I'll leave a link below where you can follow him. I have also written a review for this book on Circus Talk, an online circus publication, which you can access below if you have a subscription. And if you have anything to share about the creative process or you wanna see more videos on this topic in the future, then please let me know in the comment section below. And happy creating, everybody. I'll see you in another video soon. Bye.